So, um, is that the camera? I don't even. Know. That's the camera. What's that? Another one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, hello, you're uh, watching Enemy, and we're here with uh, the uh, artist, musician, uh, New York uh, legend, Adam Green. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in. Thank uh, you for having me. You're coming to talk to us about, uh, you have a new album on the cards, but it's not right. just an album, is it? So uh, can you tell us what this project is? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I do have an album coming out. Um, and uh, Not just an album, though. R yeah, yeah, because well, I was just going on before, it's like... I made a comic book, like a graphic novel that goes along with it. It's like a companion piece. And the album is called Engine of Paradise. And uh, the, the comic book is called uh, War in Paradise. And so it was like, originally I, I was thinking, oh, I'd make a movie, you know, uh, as I did with the Aladdin thing. Mm -hmm. And like, um, you know, the, the comic book part would be like the movie and then this would be the soundtrack, you know, the songs. And then they kind of took on two separate worlds. You know, I just started making an album and a, and a graphic novel, and now I'm just like sort of saying I'm going to put it out at the same time, and like people can just should just kind of like experience both of them. So, but presumably the album is quite, I mean, it's about twenty minutes long, is it? Something like that. It's or? not. It's maybe like a little bit longer than that. Right, but all the songs are very short, and they're two yeah. minute songs. Yeah, yeah. Well, you well, know, all my songs are short. Like, yeah. I've never written a long song. <laughs> right. Like, ever. <laughs> I mean, Dance With Me, that's quite long, isn't it? That's about... Like, it's, you think it's, it's... Is it over three minutes? Though? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. there's a line... In, so we're going to talk about the single. Is, I feel like every, every single person who's like, been writing a song is like, oh, okay, I can just put one more chorus at the end. Yeah. So I just don't do that, and now my songs are short. Yeah, and then people could just play it twice if they want to hear right. the chorus. that's again, what I think. They? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the song Freeze My Love, which is the single, you say technology has changed me. So I was wondering right. if, if two minute songs is like, you know, because our attention spans have been oh. reduced to a maximum of two minutes and you can... Uh, no, but maybe like short albums are, is for that. You know, I think the, the way I write songs hasn't really changed, but I think that like, I, I was thinking about it and I was like, do people really care if this is like a 25 minute album or whatever, you know, I, they probably can't even listen to it if it was like a, a seven minute album. <laughs> <laughs> you credit in your audience with a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, me included, you know, everyone's like that. How do you approach writing albums? So you've got, I mean, you've got, there's, there's a kind of a, as soon as you start listening to an Adam Green album, you know it's you. There's a kind of a, there's a kind of a comfortable sound to it that you just okay. know. So do you, do you kind of, well, sometimes you go more kind of scuzzy, sometimes it's quite produced and orchestral and lush. What was the thing right. behind this one? Uh, well, this one, uh, I, I started to work with a, a friend, uh, Lauren Humphrey in Bushwick in his home studio. Uh, and he collects all this like old, Serge Gainsbourg, uh, vintage equipment, you know, like uh, he's obsessed with the Melody Nelson record. The, you know, he finds out what microphone they used, like what amp they used, what headphones they used. You know, he just is like, he's really into that, yeah. into that session. And so, yeah, so he was making, you know, he got like, you know, we recorded the record on an analog right. tape machine. Right. And, you know, it, drums do sound uh, different on that kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and played with like an amazing uh, group of musicians, you know, like James... Uh, uh, Richardson from MGMT, uh, right. Jonathan Rado, uh, Florence from Florence and the Machine. Wow, right. Um, what does she do? She sings backups. She's like, she sings some like haunting little backup part, but people are going to make a big deal about gonna it. They're going to make a big deal of it, especially as you well know, as like, you know. It, it, could, it, it sounds great, but you know, I don't think that you'd be like, I mean, I have to really show you. Because that's the thing, most people, if you get Florence on a record, like Florence has like, one mode, it seems, which is kind of, you know, powerful. So. Okay, well, yeah, okay, in this, in this, instance um she was sort of trying to do like a like a a morricone kind of western you know right. like yeah. the, the very high background vocals you would hear on like an italian 60s soundtrack you know right yeah 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 so sort of um, ecstasy of gold type of but you thing. know it, when she does it it almost sounds to me like a little bit like a haunted like you know highlands <laughs> <laughs> haunted highlands vibe with a lot of reverb you do, you do always manage to get some big names involved in projects that I'm expecting you're probably not paying them loads of money for. Do you, do you have dirt on everyone? Uh, well, I mean, I, pay, I always try to pay people what I can afford to pay mm. them. But um, yeah, it's like, it's true. Like, I mean, everyone is always probably working at like a hugely discounted rate because, I mean, you know, it, for example, to make a movie like Aladdin and have like real movie stars like Macaulay Culkin and mm. Natasha Leone and Alia Shawkat, you know, all that stuff. It's like, you know, they can't, they're just doing it because they're, you know, 
they, you know, they're they're my friends and they yeah. they want they believe in the movie, you know. So we should mention this. We should talk about this film. Right. So it came out. Was it two, three years ago now? Oh, okay. Uh, that came out 2016. 2016, yeah. and it was Aladdin reinterpreted by you. Yeah, cardboard so, backdrops, sort of like yeah, paper mache, of, paper mache yeah. props. Like we made like 500 paper mache props. It's in a fully handmade world. That's like. Um, you know, uh, we made 30 different cardboard rooms, and then it looks like people are in a cartoon. Yes. You know? And then yeah, we had yeah. um, 500 props that we made out of paper mache, and it's like all hand painted. And yeah, like it looks like, uh, well, you know, it looks like it's kind of like a world, like the world that I draw in. It's mm. like people are standing inside that world. Do I mean, did, was it like kind of making your what's inside your head come to life then? It must be quite a sort of yeah, it's, surreal experience. Well, you know, it, it's like that in a lot of ways because, you know, in this case, for, for that movie, you know, I got to write all of the script, you know, like all the dialogue, you know, which I was kind of writing, kind of like trying to be kind of like, almost like um, from the same place that my lyrics come. So it's sort of like, a, you know, kind of like a little bit of like an epic poem kind of style. Mm. But it kind of, I don't know where, where that comes from. So it's like a, I'm writing all the dialogue, uh, then I got to, to paint the black lines, and like draw on the set. And then some people are standing inside of like a world of my drawings and then I got to make all the music and everything for it. So it's basically just like a fully, to me it's like a complete or like total version of my artwork. Yeah, you right, know, yeah, you know? yeah. So it's sort of the most immersive Adam Green experience yeah, you like can get. Yeah, it's like the whole, the whole thing. It's almost like an interior landscape. And to me the characters are just like little, they're almost like little pieces of like the machinery of my consciousness. You know, so like the voice of the different characters are just like, you know, my ego negotiating with like my super ego, negotiating with my id. And they're all just like having a big conversation inside of my cartoon universe. <laughs> so uh, what happened to the, the papier mache props? So you, you must have kept a few Oh yeah, well, so. you try. I mean, sadly, uh, a lot of them do perish. Yes. You know, yeah, and right, there, yeah, yeah. there was two uh, dumpsters at the end of the thing. It was really sad and wasteful, you know, but... Um, I, I tried to keep as much as I could, and I, a lot of it ended up in Macaulay Culkin's house. Right. <laughs> he has a pretty big house. I mean, I love I love to think of him playing around in his house. With your, but your no, but you know, and also oh, we, and you know, may, maybe notably, like we did have like we had an exhibit at a museum in Basel called a Foundation Baylor, which is like an amazing art museum, and so they they did an exhibit of the sets from the movie. Great. So um, you might have noticed there is a, another Aladdin that's come out. Oh yes. yes, I know. No, no, yes. no. You know, I'm good to see it. I, I will. Um, you I, seen you know, it. I, I love the cartoon, uh, the Disney cartoon. There's a there's a really old, you know, perverted kind of Pasolini Aladdin or Arabian Nights. That's right. pretty neat. Uh, there's a Russian Aladdin. There's lots of cool versions. Uh, I even saw the I think the Disney you know the Disney Aladdin on Broadway. Right. Oh wow. Um, yeah. Right. And that was that was that was cool. So so they 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 were Aladdin. Oh, oh this you know time. what? But here's the thing is, I don't. Okay, like my Aladdin, the lamp is a 3D printer, you know what I mean? Like, I was into the, just, like, the idea of, like, using the Aladdin myth to, like, mm. tell my own story or whatever. Like, I didn't want to give people the impression on the, the video that, like, I made Aladdin, like, <laughs> like, like, I didn't, transfer like, I don't want to the, tell, uh, like, I, you already could see the Bob, that. the Bob yeah. Narita's pantomime, pantomime season this Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, my, yeah, mine's like, mine's like a meditation on, like, what does it mean to be, like, a genie and what's the idea of creation and what's the idea of, like, fulfillment through like what you desire and you know what I mean it's more like I'm sure the Disney film you know, is just as deep you know it's <laughs> too, but I'm, I'm sure it's so good yours gets 6.4 on IMDb very respectable theirs gets, oh, yeah. theirs gets 7.4 so given given the marketing spend and everything I think that's that's quite good right, that's a right, good that's, return that's true that's a good return it's they pretty good have, they should have hired I, you as the it's director a pretty good, that's a pretty good score the other thing I was thinking is it, it, there must be a temptation as a sort of situation is prank. You could get a cinema to show it at the moment while they're oh, right, at, right. and people might right. accidentally go and see it right. so you could just watch the reaction. Right. right. Well, you, oh, you know, I, I was going to mention for anyone that actually wanted to watch it is that you can watch it for free. It's, it's on YouTube. Exactly. It's called Adam Green's Aladdin. It's very just generous. Type that, type that into, into YouTube and watch it. Do so, it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, is that the camera? I don't even know. That's the camera. What's that? Another one. Okay. <laughs> You're a director, you right. know this stuff. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, I didn't even get into, it's funny, as somebody, I've made two, two movies, and I'm, yeah. I'm not really that into movies. Right. <laughs> like, I just, I just wanted to make my own ones. And you were you one know? of the first person who shot on an iPhone as well, which is now right. you get sort of theatrical releases of the shot on iPhones. Yeah, so. yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the other wrong Soderberg, Ferrari. Was it? Is, right. Yeah, I, and people, you know, I, I don't know, it, is, it has been said that it is the first feature film shot on an iPhone. Oh, wow, that's, that's one of the history yeah. books. Um, <laughs> the history phones. <laughs> so we had uh, oh, yeah. th this weekend. I don't know if you were yeah. around in Britain at the time, but the Strokes came back and played this massive oh, yeah. show in uh, Victoria Park at All Points yeah. East. Uh, 
It reminded me, I saw you the first time on that very first Strokes tour all those years yeah. ago. I was just wondering, what your kind of standout memories of that? Did you kind of, was well, it? You know, because I was just at the, at the concert. Um, oh, you were, yeah, you were there? I was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it did bring back a lot of memories. Um, uh, it must have been quite an exciting time for, like, for everyone, because it was their first tour, your first tour. It was tour, our first yeah. tour, and uh, you know, when you look back at the pictures, you're like so young. Like, I mm. mean, we were in, like, I was like 19 years old or something. You mm. know what I mean? Like, you, you think, like, where are these kids? You were dressed like Robin Hood. Yeah, often. exactly. You know, and, and yeah, I was, people were, um, uh, you know, like I, I was walking around as Robin Hood, and it, it was causing, <laughs> it was causing a stir. Oh um, that, yeah. <laughs> but, but like, uh, you know, uh, what was I gonna say? That uh, I don't know. I just, I guess at the time, I, I was just thinking recently how great the show was, and how like, you know, at the time, I remember people were like, oh yeah, these guys, you know, uh, it's cool that there's like a band, you know, that's kind of evoking those like old New York bands, like the Ramones or something, you know, mm. television. But like, you know, will they ever be, like, you know, could they ever be? good like that you know and it's like i feel like now we're 20 years later it's like no they were like way better than that you yeah, know what i mean yeah. and it's like i feel like you'd have like they have like 40 good songs or something you know 40 great songs i don't know like that, a lot of the songs. whole set was just so perfect, it's so it? amazing yeah, and it's yeah. like you know there's like no band like like that i mean i don't know maybe I've, they're like maybe the best band since like nirvana or something and they do this thing where you know they could just come back once a year play a massive show just, yeah, it just they just make it look so effortless. Well, yeah, well, they don't really move a lot. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but that's what's funny is they like, don't really have to. You know, some people are just really, like that intense. You know. Have you read Meet Me in the Bathroom, which was the sort of memoir? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah are you in did, it much? Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, yeah, they did something about the moldy peaches. Yeah. And, um, was there anything that did you get your lawyers cool. involved in anything? Or no, 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 no. I, I, I thought it was cool. I mean, you know, the funniest thing is like there was. I guess like she divides it up into like these different sort of like. I don't know, sections of mm. subculture of that scene. And I didn't really know a lot about like the LCD sound system, like that whole world of um, uh, uh, like the rapture, mm. stuff like that. Like I didn't know about that whole scene. So I learned about it in the book and then I was listening to it, it's awesome. You know? It did seem like a real kind of crucible of amazing talent yeah. at that time in New York. I mean, yeah. we were all kind of, people of my age were kind of obsessed with the idea of New York in the early 2000s. It just seemed like everything was happening there. Right, right. What's yeah. it like now? Is it, um, you hear a lot about how people get, you know, priced out and all that kind of stuff. Has that affected it? Or? I, I'm sure it certainly has. I mean, I, you know, it's like, here's the thing, I have family in New York and, you know, um, we live there and, you know, I've got children, you know, they're going to school there. It's like, I just live in New York, but I mean, I'm, I'm like endorsing the city to everyone, you know? <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? Point. Yeah, it's like... Think, given what we know about your love for kind of making props and things, and I bet your kids, when it's World Book Day at school, they go... But they, they must fancy dress you know, pretty well. It's I'm just guessing. like anything, though. That they, they're like, you know, everyone kind of has the opposite thing. Like, you know, like my daughter, she's not like... You know, she, if I give her like some crayons or something, she's like couldn't care less. <laughs> No, draw. In fact, this is probably a good time that we won't be speaking about drawing, too. If you could give us a flash of the graphic novel oh, yeah. to the um, camera, so... Okay. So you have a very so this is this is the only style. copy. I mean, yeah. this, that's not going to look like bound like a little <laughs> school <laughs> report. <laughs> it's a print but, a print at home graphic novel, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you just bind, bind but, it. Yes, yeah, so I, I drew this with two friends. It's uh, Toby Goodshank and Tom Bain, um, both of who I worked with on the Aladdin movie. And so um, you know, and just look at this. It's like humans versus robotic insects, <laughs> and. Um, you, you, they they, they get into already. a war, and then the second half is in the afterlife. So the first half is in the human world, the second half is in the afterlife. Right. You know, I can, Presumably uh, there's fewer robotic insects in the afterlife. Right. Yes. Y you called it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even Spoiler. have to read it yet. <laughs> People might not know this, but you are an exhibited artist as well. You've, kind of done, you've done numerous shows now, haven't you, as well? Mm -hmm. So if you, were to, if you were to kind of sketch, if I, if I made you sketch me the thing now, Right. What would I get for it on the open market? Oh, a million. A million, right. <laughs> you're not leaving until you've done that then. Um, on the subject of, you know, kind of those, those hanging out with the strokes and those kind of things, you were also friends with the Libertines. Mm. Well, you covered what a waste, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you booked yourself a stay in the Margate Hotel yet? Or would you? Oh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see it. Mm. Um, yeah, um, the, uh, oh, the, 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 the story behind the Libertines uh, cover is that they were recording uh, in New York at the time. I mean, we were on Rough Trade together. Yeah. But they, they were in New York doing, I think they were recording like, maybe Don't Look Back Into the Sun. And they had this like kind of ongoing session going for like, I don't know, weeks. And so I, I came by and then 
uh, they taught me how to play with a waster. So it's it's like it's from their um, recording session. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. That was, that was there at the time. And you kind of kept in touch with those guys since. I know you've worked with Pete Doherty um, since, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, like uh, Pete is in is in the. Uh, Wrong Ferrari, which is my first iPhone uh, movie. Right. <laughs> Somebody just showed me there was a photograph of us filming it. I don't know who who took. You know, so I guess their friend took it. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I see them. I see them a lot. And uh, and we are kind of coming up to um, a twentieth anniversary of Moldy Peaches. Would oh, you Would you ever consider? Oh, I was going to say that I was I was speaking with Carl about maybe um, trying to think of something because I'm going to play a concert in uh, London at Earth right. in October. So okay. maybe think of something to do. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So, I mean, would you would you consider doing a, a, a reunion? Is that kind of off the cards, or I don't, I don't know what the situation? Like, I'm not, I'm doing, not trying... do, doing the multi features with Carl? No, with, <laughs> with Kim. I don't. I'm not trying to provoke. I don't know if oh. there's bad blood. Uh, I don't know, but is it something uh, that would ever happen? Or um, yeah, it's possible. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just it seemed weird to think. It, it, it's sort of freaking me out. That was 20 years ago, almost. It was 18 oh, years yeah. ago, and that. Right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah. What do you call it for the? We reissued the Moldy Peaches record with um, Rough Trade for the, I think it was like around the 20th anniversary. Or so, what is it? It's like getting close. Like, Te- yeah, t- tw- 20th will be like, two years. Yeah, yeah it was the 18th anniversary, which was very important to us. <laughs> we, were like, we were like, it's a great anniversary. Yeah, so, nice. um, yeah, so, um, but you know, we always talk about uh, can we do more Moldy Peaches? And um, me and Kimmy live on separate uh, coasts now, so it's like difficult, you know? Mm. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, so if we kind of finish off you by talking about a bit more about the new album, so can you tell us some of the th- sort of themes? Is it are the robot insects on the album, or is oh, it, no, okay. is it not you know, quite well, as? Yeah, like I, I guess I just kind of like. Uh, it's not like if you listen to the album that you're gonna be, um, you know, attacked by robot insects. Yeah, like you're not gonna hear about the plot of the of the movie. Right. It's not like I wrote songs that are like I'm the humans and this. And that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. It's I've tried rock, to do. I, I've opera. actually tried to do something with that one time. I was like hired to do something like that. I was, I was really not good at it. Um, so it, it's just like I, I, these are just these songs I was going to write, and you know, and I was going to like I was writing about these themes. You know, I was writing yeah. a script. You know, I have like a bunch. Of, I do. I write all the time, so I have a bunch of like lyrics all around, and I was using them like in the script and in my songs, and like it was kind of like just a. I didn't know where they were going, you know, and like um, so I feel like they're they're connected to me. They're it was like the work I was writing in that particular span of years. So they're all from um, the same space. They're all from the same years. mental space. Yeah, 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 and I, yeah. And I knew that if I just recorded the songs, like, when, and I did that with Aladdin, you know, when I wrote and recorded the songs uh, for that, I knew I could fit them into the movie because I knew there would be, the right song was for the right moment. Yeah. Um, but, it's interesting you said it kind of goes with it because one of the things I noted down was a bit of a kind of midnight cowboy, everybody's talking feel to oh, a yeah, couple yeah. of yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I love that song. Yeah. Um, you know, it, which is obviously that one of those kind of perfect film and music moments, that, isn't it? The way those two kind of go together. It's funny because I feel like the whole record is actually really just recorded in like a really warm, like analog way, and has like a, um, a lot of string arrangements and stuff. And you know, the the, the 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 lyrics are a lot about you know sort of like being possessed by technology. So it has a kind of like a funny juxtaposition. You know, like I just sort of like imagined it sort of t- taking place in sort of like in. I guess even like you know in the way that I feel like 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 Aladdin being a cardboard movie that is about a 3D printer. You know I think a lot of my <laughs> artwork takes place in like a you know some kind of in between zone where like you know like I can kind of tre- act like you know I can treat myself like the fool and sort of like react to technology mm-hmm. with like you know whatever kid gloves or whatever what are kid gloves? I don't know. <laughs> With my children's gloves. Your children's tiny gloves. With my on, tiny yeah. little gloves, and I just, yeah. you know, I can just. <laughs> so that's, that was sort of my approach. Right, so that's why there's no solos on it. Yeah, there's never any solos. <laughs> no, no, there's. I, I actually, you know, I would. I was, if, if I was going to make a solo, like a guitar solo thing, I feel like probably a lot of it, like I would really, really like analyze the solos. Like, you know, I would be like, that's what the strokes is, you know? Yeah. So like really, like the solos are like very like written out. Yeah. And did you hang out with those guys after the show or was it? Oh uh, yeah. I yeah. Did. I did. You did. What happened? Can you, can you reveal what do the strokes do after a show? Uh, they have like an after party. You know, here, okay, here's, check this out. This is something funny. Is like in art world, there's like these sort of, there's like these parties, mm. but they're not fun at all. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> And then if like a, if a band plays like a rock show and they invite you to the, to the after party, that's like actually a fun offer. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So yeah, so they are fun. So rockers more interesting, more, more fun than artists. What's what's so bad about an art party? 
Uh, it's like a dinner. About knocking things over. Yeah, it's right. like a dinner. Right. It's it's not it's not that fun. Okay. But, but making art is fun. There we are, and, and yeah. that's one of the you know you are yeah. a true Renaissance man. Thank you. Living the dream, artist, singer, actor, director, <laughs> yeah. the whole lot of it. Jewish, Jewish, Jewish James Dean. The Jewish James <laughs> Dean. And on that note, thank you very much for your time, Adam. Thank much you. appreciated. Thank you. Cheers.